Hey everybody, welcome. Welcome to Peppy's channel here on YouTube. Today we're going to talk about growing pepper plants. And two of these pepper plants are being grown in containers. And then the other two, you'll see them out in the ground, planted in the, uh, the front of the house. And I'll describe them, tell you a little bit about how to grow them, and uh, kind of introduce you to these peppers. Uh, one of them is a very unique pepper. Uh, and the other one is also pretty unique, but a little more commonly known. And then I've got the ghost pepper, and I've also got the uh, kachucha pepper. All right, so our first pepper plant is called a bikin bikinho pepper. And this is also known as the little beak pepper. And it's a really, really cool pepper. Very, very interesting. If you'll notice, it's got a little beak, a little pointy little protrusion there that is uh, often referred to as a bird's beak. And you can see some close-ups here of how beautiful these little peppers are. And if you'll notice here, we've got multiple plants in one 15-gallon container. And that many in one pot doesn't seem to cause any problems whatsoever. If you look over here, we've got four plants. And in this one, I'll bring you in a little closer. You can see that there's, there's two there, and there's another two in the back. And I do, I do a lot of fertilizing. Uh, once a month, I fertilize these plants. And what I do is I use an organic fertilizer, and I use very little nitrogen. So I use a low nitrogen, high phosphorus, and potassium. That's one of the things that has made a big difference. Now, if we're going to come over here, I'll show you guys uh, these little beaks. They get, actually, they get a nice little kind of a, they go into a yellow-orange color, and then later on, Now this one's still kind of a, of a yellow orange, and I don't think anybody's gone full red yet. They're supposed to go complete red, a very nice deep red color. Let's see if maybe we get one from the back. Look at that guy! Isn't that awesome looking? Got another one right there underneath. Wow! Now the thing is that with these peppers, there's a lot of hybrids out there, and people will tell you that, oh yeah, I ordered those bikinos, man, and I was told that they're not that hot. But they were hot as hell. And, and that, that's a shame because, you know, if it's the real deal, it's not supposed to be that hot. Now, I'm going to taste this guy because I'm pretty confident that I've got the real deal. And what I should taste is a, a crunchy pepper with a little fruity flavor and um, a little hint or they say a little kiss of heat. So let's see if it's got a kiss of heat or if it's an incredible heat. Let's check it out. Okay, I'm not screaming bloody murder. My face is not turning red. I'm not on fire. My tongue has got a little bit of heat. Quite mild. Quite fruity. Very nice. We've got ourselves a real deal here. Well, let's make sure. Let's go in a little deeper. Yep. Got a little more heat now, but nothing terrible. I just ate some seeds. And my mouth's not on fire, it's just got a nice, hot sensation. But hey, pretty good. I like it. Alright, so now here we have the Cheirio Roxa. This is a really nice ornamental pepper. Uh, beautiful plant from Brazil. It is pretty darn spicy. Okay, Pretty sure that these run into the 80 to 100,000 on the Scoville scale, which makes it pretty hot. Okay, And... Um, Again, if you want to grow peppers and you want to do a, uh, a really beautiful container grown pepper plant, uh, one of the most important things is the quality of the soil. So you want to use a good, good potting soil. You also want to have six to eight hours of full sun. You want to keep them moist. You don't want them to dry out, but you don't want it to be soaking wet either. Okay? And I already touched on fertilizing, which I've already mentioned. You don't use a lot of nitrogen, but you do increase your phosphorus and your potassium. Also, make sure you're using minerals because you want to avoid any chlorosis associated with um, you know, lack of iron in the soil. Now let's let's come in for a little close up on the Cheirio Roxa. These are these are what they typically end up ripening up to. They start to get this kind of a, a pinkish, a little bit of a pinkish color to them, and they also get this 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 color, which is fine. These are all ripe. Now these are actually a teeny bit smaller than my first harvest. My first harvest there were actually, I wouldn't say twice as large, but maybe a 
maybe a little bit larger than these, and they were really nice. Um, these guys I already mentioned, they're really, really, really hot. These are close to uh, 80 to 100,000 Scoville. Now on my left are the ghost peppers. Now these are one of the hottest peppers in the world. Okay, these are 1 million plus, roughly 1 million Scoville. These are not to be taken uh, without a little bit of caution and some concern. You don't want to just take these things and start eating them and giving them to your friends and family because, you know, people have ended up in the ER as a result of eating these. That's how hot they are. And if you're going to start cutting these up and you're going to get some of that juice on your fingers, you're not going to want to touch your face or other body parts because you're going to be very uncomfortable. It's pretty bad. It hurts. Trust me. I've been there, done that. Eating them? No. I'm not going to try to eat one of these. I will never try to eat one of these. Okay? I'm not going to do it. I've seen people eat these and it's ugly. <laughs> you might think it's funny and I'm laughing right now because it's funny for me and you to watch this poor person eating this thing, but it's sad because this, this pepper, you eat it, you freak out, and then it gets worse. And then you think it's okay, and then it gets worse. It's worse and worse and worse. It builds up. The intensity gets worse and worse and worse. So, yeah, you think you drank some milk and you sat down? Yeah, sure. You're going to be feeling worse in 30 minutes later, okay? Trust me. This is a pepper you grow because you want to grow something that's different, but you don't want to give these peppers to people, literally, unless they're going to sign an affidavit or statement that says that they're not going to hold you responsible. I might be exaggerating a little bit. I probably am, but they're pretty hot. And these are the cachucha peppers. These are the great peppers that we use uh, in Cuban and Puerto Rican and Caribbean dishes. They have absolutely no heat, even though they look like they do. They look like habaneros and they look like they're deadly, but they're not. They actually are very good for uh, chicken and rice dishes and things like that. So I highly recommend the cachucha pepper, really easy to grow. And uh, I'm going to go out to the front and I'm going to show you the cachucha pepper in the ground. And I'm going to show you the devil over here. I'm going to show you the. Uh, <laughs> the ghost pepper, also known as the boot jolokai pepper. Now there are two other rivals to this that are actually hotter and that is the Trinidad Scorpion and I believe the Carolina Reaper if I'm not mistaken. Those are the ones that are really really hot. But again, I mean how hot do you want to make a pepper? My gosh. Alright, so this is the uh, this is the cachucha pepper, the ahi cachucha pepper that I was talking about. And you can see this one's growing in the ground. It's doing quite nicely. Uh, nice big old plant. I trimmed it back quite a bit about uh, a week ago uh, and I got in there and I had to clean it up. I did some pruning because it was just it was a mangled mess. I mean it was growing in inwards and it was just getting really nasty so I had to open up the uh, open up the canopy quite a bit. Now before I get in there let me just talk to you a little bit about how I fertilize these uh, when they're in ground. Now I already mentioned that the ones that I grow in the pots those I use about a handful of organic fertilizer and I'll go out to the edge of the pot and then I'll cover up the fertilizer and I do that about once a month and I know I'm repeating myself most likely here but I also use a foliar feed of um, uh, kelp and I also incorporate in that foliar feed once a month I incorporate uh, iron and uh, minor uh, elements okay so if we look at this uh, at this plant we uh, we see it looks pretty good I mean it looks a little little yellow here and a little yellow there but otherwise it's, it's looking fine uh, there is some challenges with this guy uh, more than the others uh, and that challenge seems to be with the white fly and there is a solution for white fly uh, it's an organic solution uh, using a a type of a fungus that you can spray and uh, if you follow all those directions you'll get it into the soil and you'll get it on the on the leaves of the plants and you'll help to control all the white fly that sent see I don't know why it seems to love this cachucha um, and it's been happening for years and I finally was able to find a solution so if you've got a white fly issue take a look here for the video that says uh, white flies how to control white flies right here on my channel it's a great video it'll give you a lot of good good information but I mean we, we're, you know we're not doing we're not doing terrible we're doing much better and by the way white fly you're gonna see the white fly usually work its way from the soil up so you'll see the leaves on the bottom and there's actually there are already some here you can see there's there's some you see them flying around so I've got to get back in here and I've got to try to give them a little bit more treatment for the white fly all right let's go look at the uh, let's go look at the uh, the ghost pepper all right 
those peppers are growing like crazy. You can see those green ones that I referred to earlier. And you can see the ones there on the bottom. It's another green one. Got a couple of nice red ones. And they're all in there. And it's loaded. I mean, we've got we've got flowers. I've got flowers. I've got small fruits coming here. I got them in all shapes and sizes. The plant is about about three feet tall. It's going to end up being about a four foot plant. Look at this branch over here. Get all those little get all those little peppers that are coming out. When I used to sell these plants, I had a, a warning, an actual warning on every one of the plants, and I used to make people sign <laughs> that I was not responsible if they ate this and ended up in the ER, because it can happen. Anyway, if you notice, they go from a, they go from a nice green, they get really nice and green. Here, here's one over here. They get that nice green color. And that's, that's the full grown size right there. And then they start to go into an orange shade. You go down here, you'll see they go into a kind of an orange green. You see that one on the left? Orange green. And then the next day, before you know it, the next day they're like this. Nice deep, deep red. Menacing red. Trust me. They're menacing. These guys are one million Scoville. Nice healthy looking plant. Organic fertilizer and you should be in great shape. Give it a go. Try some pepper plants. Try to grow some exotics. You know there's another one that's really cool that I'm already waiting on the seeds and that's called Chaparita or Charapita. I think it's Charapita. It's a perfectly perfectly round tiny little pepper and I don't know but I was told that it sells for twenty thousand or twenty six thousand some crazy number twenty six thousand dollars a pound that's probably a bunch of BS but it's all over the internet it's called Charapita Charapita and if I can find the picture if I can find the picture I will post a little picture here of the Charapita all right well that about wraps it up for how to grow pepper plants and um, I hope you guys enjoyed this I hope you guys uh, learned something and um, leave a couple of comments. Let us know what you're growing, what you're up to. Let us know what uh, you do to control insects and so on. And uh, give us a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and hit that little bell too. That little bell will keep you guys updated. The bell is right there next to the subscribe button. Keep you guys updated for next videos that I do.